everyone. How are we doing today? We are going to be working on this fun um, llama painting. You can see here we have the original, our sort of inspiration. And just to kind of get an overview of um, what we will be doing, um, we're going to do the background first. Okay, we're going to do all the background first. And then we're going to start layering in the llama and the flowers. All right, so let's look over our painting materials. We should have a nice tray of paint here. Our background colors are gonna be um, this, this, with a little touch of white for kind of like star-like items and some of that um, sort of sky blue. So these paints last really long. Um, so I tell everybody like, don't throw away the lids because there's no reason. Okay, Ruth, we're good. My dog's crazy. Uh, there's no reason you can't reuse them. So you can dip your brush. Um, right in or you could pour it out on the tray that's fine as well and we're just going to start going right around our beautiful llama i'm going to start with that more aqua color here or teal probably more like a teal now the little eyelashes you might have to go over them and that's okay as long as you kind of see where they started you should be all right you want to try to paint around them you certainly can so what we're doing right now is called cutting in I'm just go all around now if you wanted to go all around in a light blue you probably have enough to do that as well um, if you wanted to do that instead or do all light blue with touches of teal you could probably do that keep working around now some of the other items you'll need for today are um, a cup of water and a paper towel and then I cover my workspace it just has like a clear piece piece of like a plastic on it because this paint is made to last so I tell everybody be careful of your clothing as well so to cut in we just go right along Now, while this is still wet, right, I'm kind of making sure it's all still wet. Take a wee little bit of that sky blue and just work it in. You could add a little bit, like I didn't even paint here yet, so I'll put like a little bit here. And again, it doesn't have to be a lot. I just worked in a little bit of that blue <clears throat> and then we'll just keep on going and you can put as much of that blue in as you want Again, if I'm working too fast for you, you can always, you know, pause this video. That's one of the nice things about having a video. Like, wait, she's already halfway done. Oh my goodness, you know, you can pause. And review if you need to as well. So cutting in means going right around the edge and just use the larger of the two brushes that I gave you. light blue and work that in here and there. I'm mostly keeping my um, strokes up and down. 
Um, working on an easel really isn't an advantage because then your paint can run. It doesn't really do that too much with the background, but when you start getting really detailed items, so don't be afraid that if you're painting um, with your painting laying down flat, that's just fine. I'm just gonna start with a few light blue areas then paint in around those. Again, I'm not even rinsing my brush between colors. I want those two colors to be easily mixed and blended, so you don't even need to rinse your brush for this part. And if you did want to paint your edges of your canvas, now is the perfect time to do that. You don't want to wait till the last step um, because then sometimes it doesn't blend just right. You want to kind of keep it, do it while you're working on the edge. Well, hello, mittens. <laughs> my, my assistant painting cat. Okay, here we go. Go right around the top. Again, you don't have to do this. I've had people um, put really cute um, decorative ribbon around the edge of the canvas and actually hang the canvas with that. You can hot glue um, the piece of ribbon to the back of the canvas and make like a little bow to hang the canvas. That would be super cute. You could pick like a hot pink or something that would go well with some of the accent colors for this one. Walmart has a great ribbon selection. The Heidelberg one, it's like way in the back, but it's a lot of selection. And the Dollar Tree, surprisingly, has so many ribbons now. If you catch it at the right time. I find like if I'm going to get ribbon, they don't have it. But if they, <laughs> but if I'm there for anything else, I'm like, ooh, look at all that ribbon. Okay. I got a little bit of um, that aqua color inside my llama. It doesn't matter. If you, if you have that happen, you can just wipe it lightly or whatnot. All right, we're gonna paint over it anyway. All right, so we have all of our backgrounds cut in. Uh, we have some white soft little stars um, that we're gonna put in while the paint is wet. And we'll just see how they show up. And if we don't feel like they show up bright enough, then maybe we'll come back when it is dry. But I think on that original one, I did it while it was wet. All right, so I'm gonna take my smaller brush now. And again, it's just really loose. Oh yeah, that's what we want. Very loose, like star shapes. It's not really like um, snow. It's just supposed to look like magic. And again, we're not going for perfection. Just loose little, I kind of do like a, a cross, or X, and then kind of like a T. And again, it doesn't have to show up perfectly. It can be more light. Right, because we don't want it to look too snowy because then it kind of becomes like, oh, we can only put it out for winter. And this is probably a design that if I had a daughter, I would want to have out year round. So I've been telling a lot of people, they're like, what do you do with all these paintings? I have a seasonal hook in my house and I just change the painting on it all the time. <laughs> that way, you know, Valentine's Day, okay, boop, you know, you could change all the time. Or if this is going in your child's room, you know, just leave it up all the time. Uh, if you wanna add a name, you certainly can do that. Um, you could write, you know, if you wanted to do a name, um, you could do it over these, these little snowflake items or don't do the snowflakes items in that area. If you're gonna write a name, I would let it dry and I would write it in pencil first, and then you could paint it in white or hot pink or whatever color you want. 
Um, another thing that makes it easy to write names is like if you have a paint pen or a Sharpie. Okay, there we go. We have our nice little sort of star indications. I don't know if you can see, but there's little bits of white just around the little headdress. See, just little um, splashes of white. And it just gives it a little touch of magic. You probably didn't even notice it was there. Huh, sparkly llamas. So just add little touches of white around. Okay, and you can see it just adds a little bit of magic. All right, now we're gonna rinse out our brush. I got my cup of water here. And we're gonna paint this llama uh, mostly white with touches of gray. I'm just gonna rinse that and dry that because we do wanna make sure now that our brush is rinsed and dried. We don't want to have a aqua colored llama. So let's start down here at the bottom where the sort of a simpler area. We're just going to start by making it white, which seems silly. It's like the canvas is already white, but we still want it white. We'll do one area of the llama at a time. All right, now, as you can see, this llama has a lot of little streaks of gray. So I'm gonna open up my gray cup. We're just gonna dip our brush in a little bit of gray, and I didn't even rinse out the white yet. We don't want it to be too much gray. We still overall want a white llama. So add some little dashes. My little picture's gone away. Come on back, there you go. And again, just some light little dashes. We'll have some here near the center. See how we're getting that nice blended shaded look? If it starts to be too much, stop and rinse your brush. We don't want a gray llama, right? If the um, aqua you have for any reason is like still too wet and it's giving you any trouble, you can always blow dry it or just stop this video for a few minutes and let it dry. I'll go get a drink or something. By the time you come back, it'll be more set set up if it's getting um, too wet for you. And I tell everyone that the magic way to fix paintings is to blow dry them because it stops the colors from mixing. And that's usually what people are trying to fix, like white mixing with black or, um, you know, red white mixing with white or something like that. It's usually like a color mix that's um, causing your issue with the paint. All right, so we're just gonna kind of Streak all our little llama little dabs in here. And again, I'm just using a short little dashy motion. Once I get all the little color laid in there. And again, we don't want it too gray. It's a white llama. So that's as far as I want to go. Okay. All right, now we're going to do um, the same thing with the ears. So I'm going to rinse my brush and dry it. We're going to paint the ears all white. And like I said, it seems silly to paint white things white, but you have to. Plus, it helps our paint to blend and shade easily. Get this all white.
There we go. And then for this one, we're gonna kind of do gray around the edges and on this sort of extra little line that we have there. And if you're having a hard time with controlling um, the gray inside the ears, I think we could go back to this smaller brush. So it is still has a little bit of white on it, which is fine. So we're gonna go gray. Now trying to get the gray to blend and shade in a, in a kind of a smooth way is hard. You can always use your finger a little bit. Because we want the ears to look nice and velvety. Yeah, just a little finger and just wipe it off in your paper towel. There you go. All right, so I only dip my gray in my brush and gray one time to do the whole ear. Because again, we want white ears with touches of gray, not gray ears. We don't want too much. Both ears, I only dipped it in gray one time and I still had some white on my brush. I didn't even rinse my brush. Good, and then we, any area that's like having a hard time blending and shading, you could just use your finger a little bit. It gives it that soft sort of velvety look. I think I want a little bit more gray right there, so I'm just gonna do like the tiniest bit of gray on my brush. Yeah. Okay, now the face. So uh, we're gonna do the same thing with the face that we've done with everything else. We're gonna paint it white. Okay, now I'm gonna wipe that off because I had a little bit too much gray in there still. He just wipes right off. Okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna rinse my brush really good. Make sure it only has white. Okay. That's better. I'm gonna get up and around these flowers. Once we get all that white laid in, then we're gonna do a similar thing that we did before, a wee little bit of gray around the edges. And just keep it kind of dabby as you go. You don't want it to be too perfect. We don't want it to be too, too gray either. Again, do all this while the wet, the white is still wet. So it'll help it to blend and shade. If it gets too gray at all, just take more white on your brush and work it out a little bit because we don't want the face very gray. It's actually whiter than the other parts we've painted so far. We want the face mostly white. We'll just look back at our little original. You can see on the face, there's the littlest dabs of gray. But not a lot. Oh, look how cute. All right, now this whole nose area is gray. And my big brush is a little too big, I think, to get that detailed. So I'm gonna take my smaller brush. 
And again, you could pause at any time. And the nostrils themselves are going to be black, so you can paint around them. If you paint over them accidentally, it's not the end of the world. I always put black back over them. And then this little mouth area here sometimes gets lost. And so if you wanna hold off on the bottom part, um, you can do that. Or if you can leave a little line there for yourself, like that, because you don't wanna lose where the mouth goes, if that makes sense. So try to do that or you can wait on that spot if you're like, oh, that's gonna be too hard. Okay. We're starting to get everything laid in. And now we're gonna be looking at the flowers. And the leaves. So we're gonna let this dry a little bit um, so we can kind of work on stuff, right? And then eyelashes are really hard and I have had people just blow dry it and use um, a little bit of a Sharpie marker to make really thin, perfect lashes. And if you are a super perfectionist, you know who you are and you need to do a Sharpie because I would say that that's the number one um, place where people ruin their paintings or don't like them. They'll have this gorgeous painting and then they push too hard with the brush and the lashes get big and then they're like, I'm gonna try to fix it. And then they try to put paint around it and it just starts spiraling quickly out of control. So if you are like, oh boy, it's gonna be too hard. Um, I must drink my paint water <laughs> instead of my coffee. If it's gonna be too hard, then do use a Sharpie. All right, so first step, we have a nice green and we have a yellow. And you can see here, there's kind of like a, a little bit of like a, a limey green to um, some of the leaves. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of color. And again, you can see my cups are still completely filled. People are like, oh my gosh, we're not gonna have enough paint. I mean, we over pour, so don't worry. I'm gonna mix a little bit of limey greens. I'm gonna take some yellow. We don't wanna ruin the yellow because we do need it. So just be careful of ruining all your yellow. And I'm gonna stir up a little bit of a lime green. So it's just gonna be more yellow than green. We kind of need two little greens. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna kind of paint the leaves with this lime green that we make. And then while it's still wet, take a little bit of that regular green and just kind of put the little line on it. Okay. It just gives you that little center line on your leaf. And you could paint a couple of the leaves lime green first and then put like the center line on. Now remember, if you want a line to be thinner, just press lighter. I'm trying to identify the ones that are leaves. And because there's a few leaves together over here, we can use that regular green too to kind of define. The 
those leaves as well. All right, so I got all my little leaves painted in. I got a few more here. laid in. To get a little point, just kind of lift your brush at the end. That'll help them to be pointed. Okay, now I'm going to go back with that darker green. And just put little lines in the center. And again, just keep it light and wispy. These ones, I'm just going to put little line right here to kind of keep that one leaf separate. And then I'm still gonna put a little line in the center. Okay, and don't get too obsessed with the leaves. They seem to show up so much at the start, um, but they really don't want you to get all like the colorful flowers on. All right, so there's my little leaves. Added little dashy lines to each one. Okay, now the next color we have here is orange. And if you look at our tray, we don't have any orange, so we have to make it. So I'm just gonna move some of my little paint cups out of the way here to have a little bit of mixing room. So I'm gonna take a little bit of pink with a clean brush because we don't want to ruin our pink. I'm gonna rinse my brush and then some yellow, probably two little swabs of yellow. So it takes a little more yellow than pink to make orange. We'll mix these together. Get a nice little orange. Perfect. So I did two dabs of yellow and a dab of pink. And again, we don't need that much. There's about one, two, three, four, flowers that are orange. So you could pick whatever ones you want. I'll just try to stick with our little original guide here as much as I can. Just beware of any of the wet green paint. You know, if you touch the wet green, you know it's gonna get on there. I know we have painters <clears throat> for this one that are younger too. So I'm gonna show a little fun technique. Now I get pretty big fingers, but your hands would be really small. And I know we, um, I think for this one, she said that there's a few younger girls, but I'm not 100% sure. But this is a fun technique, even if you're not that young, because if you're a kid, your fingers are gonna be pretty small. So I'm gonna show you some of the hot pink flower. So I'm just going to put a little hot pink on my tray. Okay. And then your fingers, like I said, are smaller than mine. I'm going to use my pinky because it's my smallest finger. I'm just going to dip it in a wee little bit of paint. And it's so much fun to just kind of do some stamping. Could do little stamp flowers. Again, their little pointer finger will be smaller than mine. But look how cute. And that's just with your fingertips. So you would use your pointer finger, okay, because your finger will be smaller than mine but I need like a small finger to be able to get these little um, leaves in. So you just kind of dab on. So that's a really fun technique too. Um, doing the little finger stamping. Look how pretty. I literally just stamped it on with the finger. And for the pink flowers, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two. And again, it doesn't have to be an exact science. If you do more of one color because you love pink or you want to make another, like you could do this all in pink. You could do hot pink and then mix some pink with white. You know, there's a lot of options. Don't, don't feel like we all have to do it exactly the same way. So as you're painting, right? Maybe you have other paints at home you want to use too or other brushes, that's fine too. 
people ask that all the time. Like, I have purple at home. I want to use, oh, go ahead. These are acrylic paints. Okay, we got one, two, three, four. I'm going to try to stick with my original plan here. It must be five. Look how fun the little finger stamping is. Or, like I said, feel free to use a brush. It's totally fine, too. And one more pink one. It should be over here somewhere. Again, just do your best to stay in the lines. If I can do it with the pinky finger, I bet you could do it with the pointy finger really easily. There we go. Six little hot pink flowers. Oh, they're so cute. Okay, now for the yellow, you can do the same technique. You can brush it on, um, paint it on. You could do the finger dabbing, whatever. Float your little boat. Let it float, right? And then I'm going to put, if you want to do the finger dabbing, you just put a little paint on your tray. Not too much, right? And then just one little finger of paint for the dabbing. Now, some of these are getting pretty tight in. I don't know if I'll be able to dab all of the ones. You could do a mix of both. Like this one I can easily do. But some of them are a little bit tight in there now because there's so many other pretty flowers around. I'm still getting them pretty good. Again, if you have a hard time with that, just um, do the um, paintbrush. Now just fill in with a few little other finger dabs. If you look here, you'll see some happy little dabs of just little dashes of color. See like there's yellow over there or pink over there. And those are just little finger dabs of color. So you don't have to do too many, but like over here, there's just some little dabs of yellow. Or you could do little brush strokes, but it just gives it more joy. There we go. And it helps to sort of fill it in even more, like a really beautiful little crown. And then you'll see there's a couple little dashes of the hot pink too, just all around, right? So you can use your brush or your finger. So I'll just show what it would look like if you did the brush, just a couple little dabs. And these would just be like extra little petals or just little happy things, whatever. Whatever you feel that it needs to look filled in, that's what we want to do. And then we're gonna put little flower centers on you can do tiny little dots for the flower centers if you want, or you could do other colors for the flower center. So what I was doing for the little um, center for this one is, let me get a little black paint out. Okay, so what I did is I just took the wrong end of my littlest brush, and you could put tiny little dots. Four tiny little dots in each flower center. One, two. Some of them might only be able to fit three. But you could do three or four tiny little black dots, or you could do like take your hot pink and do hot pink dots, you know, in the yellow flowers. So you could, you know, you could change it up. It doesn't have to all be black dots. So in the original, they were black. But you could always change that up. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Mittens, get out of my coffee. Look, she's trying to get my coffee. You're a very bad girl, but I love you. Oh, my pretty mittens. Are you on camera? You say hi? You say hi? No, you can't be sitting on mommy's lap. No, mommy's working. No, mommy working. Now she wants to come sit with me. Mittens, get down. <laughs> no, no. Hey, I'm working, miss. Excuse me, I'm working. <laughs> She's my favorite cat and she knows it. Get down now, you're gonna knock all my stuff over. Whoop. <laughs> she has a real knack for knocking everything over. She jumps up on my dining room table. We're all like, brace for impact. Because <gasps> she just knocks everything over. Okay, let's see here. So three or four little dots in each one. Again, I'll just show you what it looks like if you want to change colors. So let's say you have a um, hot pink flower and you wanted to do little yellow dots. Well, then go right ahead. See, here's yellow. You could do green dots. 
there's one with yellow dots. Um, so I have a, a yellow flower here. Maybe I'll do, you know, orange dots for that one. I mean, you can literally do any colors. You can see they'll all look, it'll all look great no matter what. And the orange didn't show up too good on the hot pink, but maybe I should have tried yellow. But I can always go back and do that. So I got a yellow one. I'll put some orange dots. Okay, so have fun with it. Um, you know, just experiment, have fun. All right, so after you're done with all of the flower crown and you really have it filled in and looking you know as full as you want i always tell everybody like stand back a little bit and make sure you have it you know as full as you wanted to have it um so i feel like for mine it looks good but there's maybe just a few little areas that i wish had just a little more like fullness i'm just gonna add like a few more dabs And I never really did any add any um, orange dabs. I think I'm gonna add a couple of the orange dabs as well. Plus I still have orange paint made, might as well use it, right? Again, I'm just looking for white spots. I'm not trying to like ruin anything. There, now I feel like it looks really filled in. All right, now like the, for this next step, we're gonna be using a lot of black. And if you're going, oh boy, and you know that you're like super nervous person and you're not, you don't wanna do that, you know, outline in black, then you should go, you should blow dry this or let it dry and then use a Sharpie marker. There is no shame in that. It will look just as nice, okay? All right, so for this one, we have to try to outline the llama ears. And I tell everybody to roll your brush to get it as pointed as you can. If you're using our brush, it does work, but you could use your other brushes if you want. And just keep the touch light, okay? Keep the touch light. You don't have to push really hard. And if the line is inconsistent, that's fine. It doesn't have to be the same thickness the whole way. A lot of people get it really thick because they feel like, well, it has to be exactly the same the whole way. It really doesn't. There could be thick and thin spots. Okay, here we go with our first little ear. See, it's not all exactly the same and that's okay. Again, you know yourself, if you're gonna like absolutely freak out, if it's not perfect, you should use a Sharpie marker. I'm just turning mine upside down because it's easier for me to pull down on the lines than it is for me to push up. If you're laying on the table, you could rotate you know, the painting to the easiest angle for you. Now, Sharpie marker will only work if the painting is completely dry. If it hits a wet spot, it will stop working and probably even ruin your marker. So if you're going Sharpie, which that is totally fine, just make sure you blow dry your painting or give it a good like 20 minutes to dry. Okay, now we're back to the upright position. Now we're gonna start working on, oh, it's looking so cute already. We're gonna start working on the eyes. And again, if, you know, if you're worried about lashes, just use a Sharpie. Try to go around that glimmer of the eyeball as best you can. And if you can't, it's not a big deal. You could always paint it back in later. Got one eyeball. Like I said, those lashes are no joke. Use a light touch. I even got mine thicker than I wanted. Let's try again then. 
my little brush nice and rolled up here, nice and lightly. And go nice and light. Okay, I've got them in pretty good so far. I'm gonna work on the other side a little bit and then I'll come back and kind of fill in the lashes a little bit more. You can see there's still just very light coverage and that's okay. Closer here. I got one more little trick up my sleeve, too, for lashes. I think that might help us. and that is using the wrong end of the brush. So we had done that before for like a, a dot, and you can also use it to make somewhat of a line. See, that works too, let's try that. Though it doesn't work perfectly like maybe the first swoop, you might have to go over it once or twice, but it still might help you keep a thinner line. There's more than one way to get there. Okay, yeah, now I really like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna try that dipping method on the other side. Okay, and I think I got those lashes perfect now. I love them. Okay. She is very lashy. All right, now we're gonna start looking at the nostrils and the nose. So we're gonna try to fill in our nose. little buddy. Now we might have to use that same technique to drag down our little mouth part. So the mouth part comes down like this and into that little mouth part that we sort of saved. I'm just rounding off with my little brush. You can see it takes a little bit of extra effort, but I think it works really well. Again, this is just the wrong side of the brush. Unless you have a really, really um, thin brush or roll that brush, we gave you really well. I feel like this is the best method.
thin black lines are always difficult. Black is a very strong color to um, paint with. So this kind of gives you a little more control. And then we're just going to finish with outlining um, around the body a little bit. And I'm gonna, just going to roll my brush for that so it's not so teeny tiny detailed. You can kind of roll with that a little easier. So rolling that brush. Okay, it's almost all outlined. And again, if you don't even want to do the black outline, you don't really have to. I wouldn't say that it's going to look bad without it. Well, let's just review everything. So we did all of our background. We got the llama ears um, put in. And I think we did a really nice job getting the mouth um, laid in and all the little llama fur. And um, I think it ends up looking great. I hope everyone had fun today painting this beautiful little llama named Clara. Bye everyone, I hope you have a great rest of the day.